Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today I am at the i29 Raceway of the Midlands and I have my brand new iPhone 13 Pro Max. My brother-in-law and my father-in-law are gonna be driving a Dodge Challenger Hellcat, a Lamborghini, and a Ferrari. And I'm gonna be here taking pictures and video and I'm gonna be testing out the new iPhone. We're gonna be filming these cars to get a better idea of how this camera works under some beautiful conditions here. It's cool, it's crisp, beautiful sunrise, some nice fog on the racetrack. Let's check it out and see what this iPhone 13 Pro Max can really do. So this is cinematic mode and I'm using audio just from the camera right now. I'm kind of flying blind here because I'm using the actual main uh, lenses uh, for the camera instead of the front facing camera to get some better quality. So we'll see how this does with cinematic mode uh, and how blurry the background is. I don't know what the f-stop is set to right now so I'm gonna have to mess around with those settings. I literally just got this last night so I'm still trying to figure out all of that stuff but uh, this is looking pretty good so far. I've been testing cinematic mode on some of the cars, taking photos, and I'm really impressed so far, especially with cinematic mode. Uh, it's really easy to use, great depth of field, and it's looking really good. Hopefully this audio sounds good too, because I've been impressed with some other vloggers' audio, so we'll see. Got a lot of loud music here, so what do you do? from the iPhone 13 again in cinematic mode. Just wrapping up the race day here. Brother-in-law and father-in-law are pumping with adrenaline. I am too a little bit. The cinematic mode on this phone is really surprisingly awesome. Now I haven't looked at the footage, but what I was doing to control focus, to lock on focus, everything that I need to do to track these cars and have cool rack focuses, it just worked amazingly well. And I am really liking cinematic mode. Again, I go back to if I was a 10 or 12 year old kid that was making films and trying to do things with my filmmaking that emulated what the pros do, this would be an amazing tool for that. So I'm gonna head back to the studio, take all this footage, look at it, and sit down with all of you to give final thoughts on the iPhone 13 Pro Max for video and cinematic mode. This was awesome. If you ever have a chance to come out and do one of these uh, extreme racing things, uh, definitely take, take advantage of it. I was just a spectator and I was pumping with adrenaline. This is really awesome. The place is packed, great energy, beautiful day for this. I'll see you all back at the studio. So that's the iPhone 13 Pro Max in cinematic mode. Like I said, I had a ton of fun using this feature for the first time, and I'm really excited for what the future holds for not only the iPhone camera hardware, but features like cinematic mode. If you like what you saw from the iPhone, give this video a like. It's a great way to support the channel and to let me know that this kind of content has value for all of you. Now, before we get into what I liked and didn't like about cinematic mode, I wanna give a huge shout out to Upbeat for the music and sound effects used in this video. 
Upbeat is not a sponsor of this video, but I am a subscriber to their service. And for this video, I really wanted a poppy synth and electronic soundtrack. I think I was inspired by my love for the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling. There's something about supercars and synthesizers that just go really well together. I also needed some sound effects to fill in a few areas where the sound captured in camera just wasn't representative of the energy and atmosphere of the racetrack. Upbeat just recently launched their sound effects library, and I was quickly able to find some race car sound effects that worked perfectly in this video. So if you're a content creator and looking for a music provider, definitely check out Upbeat. They've created a free music platform built from the ground up for the creator community with a free account. Yes, you heard correctly, free. You can download up to 10 full length music tracks per month which you can freely use in your YouTube videos without risking copyright claims. For $6.99 per month, you can create a premium account that provides unlimited and unrestricted access to Upbeat's catalog, as well as the ability to whitelist your YouTube channel and preempt any future copyright claims. Your premium membership also gets you access to Upbeat's sound effects library so you can take your content to the next level. I've got a link down in the description below. It is an affiliate link, so if you do create a premium account, it puts a little coin in my pocket, a great way to support the channel and level up your own content creation. So definitely check out Upbeat. All right, so I wanna talk about all the pros and cons I found after a morning of shooting with the iPhone 13 Pro Max and cinematic mode. Let's start with the pros. So most of us saw the keynote from Apple. Cinematic mode looked pretty dang cinematic. Was it perfect? No. If you're a professional filmmaker, are you a little annoyed at how Apple thinks they can reduce all of these tried and true elements of a film into an app on an iPhone? Probably. But look, for the kids, for the content creators, for filmmakers that are finding their voices, exploring the medium, trying to just express themselves through the art of cinema, this is an incredible device to be able to do that. I had fun using it, and I haven't had fun with my iPhone camera in quite a while. If my brother and I had had something like this when we were lugging around a VHS camcorder and editing our movies in camera in the early 90s, who knows what we could have made. What impact that ability to create short films that are similar in spirit to high-end cinema would have had on our lives. For this to be the starting point for cinematic mode is incredibly impressive. It's only going to get better and it's going to get better really, really fast. So another pro, adjusting your aperture before and after filming. I didn't do much of this while I was filming. I stuck with an F2.8 aperture pretty much across the board, but I love knowing that if the parts where I was vlogging had too much depth of field, I could adjust it after the fact to make it feel more natural. Now there's supposed to be an update in the future for iMovie and Final Cut Pro that allows you to make these adjustments in the editing software versus having to do it first on your phone using the Photos app. Having this kind of control and relatively worry-free filming is really nice, especially for those out there who are just starting to learn what aperture and depth of field is. Another feature I really loved was being able to lock your focus. Cinematic mode is essentially searching the frame for something to focus on, and when you're frame gets busy with a lot of people or objects, it can bounce around as it tries to find something to focus on. To avoid that, you can double tap to set automatic focus tracking on a subject. You can also touch and hold on the screen to lock the focus at a specific distance from the camera. It takes a moment to get used to these controls, but after a while of making a concerted effort to do so, it really does become second nature. And the last pro I want to talk about is audio. I have been shocked by the quality of audio I'm hearing from YouTubers who have tested vlogging with the iPhone 13 Pro. When I listened to the audio I captured when vlogging with my phone, I was beyond shocked by the quality of the audio. Go back and listen to the moments where I'm vlogging and just listen to that audio. It's clean. It sounds like it's at the forefront of the entire sound environment. And I felt like I didn't really have to make any adjustments to the audio for it to sound pretty darn good. I did add a compressor and a limiter, but other than that, I left it alone. Goodbye the microphone and audio with the wide angle lens and you have an amazing tool for creating content with just your phone. Now, if you're in a big room that has a lot of echo and reverb, the iPhone isn't going to save you. That's where a shotgun mic comes in handy. But for everything else, it sounds like the new iPhone's microphone does an incredible job of capturing solid audio. So let's talk about the cons. And there are several. To start, cinematic mode can only record in 1920 by 1080, which is just high definition, not 4K, at 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second in cinematic mode? Cinema is 24 frames per second, so why 30, Apple? 
Is it because of some kind of software issue that still needs sorting? Is it to give you room to make planned upgrades that then incentivize people to either buy a new phone or upgrade their software? Withholding 24 frames per second in cinematic mode would be a great way to do that, but it's my hope that there's maybe some other reason. I will say that I find it hard to call something cinematic that's filmed in a frame rate most commonly used in soap operas and television. So another big con, it looks like the shutter speed to me gets cranked really high in bright light situations. I do not know this to be a fact. I'm basing this off of what the footage looks like, specifically the vlogging footage I have. It looks like every frame is perfectly crisp as if the 30 frames per second soap opera effect is combining with a high shutter speed to make the footage look a little choppy. And it makes sense. The iPhone doesn't have ND filters, so how else can it preserve a low aperture in bright sunlight? Maybe adjust the ISO? Uh, perhaps. To me, it looks like the shutter speed increases significantly in bright light, and I am not a fan of that look. Now, did anybody notice all the lens flares in my footage? There were a ton of them. And it makes sense. The lenses are not surrounded by any kind of hood or matte box, and that means a ton of light can hit the lens at a crazy angle and create flares. Some have speculated that Apple is going to fix this with software, somehow removing them digitally in real time. Either way, the lens flares are a serious issue and one that I think can only be resolved with a lens hood or a matte box. So another con I had was the speed with which the camera racks focus to a different object. To me, it does it way too fast. I want to be able to control the speed of that rack in a setting on the camera. The speed with which focus racks is tied to the tone, the mood, the feel of any film. I'm sure this will be added in an update down the road, but I did find that I was missing that kind of control, which is a setting that's available in the menus of my Canon EOS R and C300 Mark II. And there seems to be a kind of focus breathing that happens when the focus is racked. The outer edges of the frame flex and move depending on the severity of the rack focus. This is common in a lot of photography lenses being used with mirrorless or cinema cameras, and it can be really distracting to the viewer. Is it all the time? No, but eliminating that would be a welcome update to cinematic mode. And the last con I have is not being able to adjust the depth of field and the focus points in iMovie or Final Cut Pro, yet. As of now, you have to use the Photos app on your phone, and then you have to transfer the footage via AirDrop or iCloud Photos to preserve those changes. Before you send via AirDrop, you need to turn on the All Photos Data Setting. I personally like to transfer video using Image Capture, which is a built-in utility in Mac OS for pulling photos and video off of devices physically connected to your computer. But if you use this method, the changes you made in the Photos app to depth of field or focus points won't come through. I'll have a link in the description to the Apple support article that goes in depth on how to use cinematic mode on your iPhone so you can get a better start than I did. But that's it really, the pros and cons of cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro. Again, I had a ton of fun trying out this new feature as well as exploring all the new hardware upgrades there are in my iPhone 13 Pro Max, of which there were a a ton in comparison to the hardware on my iPhone 10s Max. And let me know what you all think about cinematic mode down in the comments. And if you liked the music in this video, kind of that drive synthy vibe, check out Upbeat using the link in the description. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, click all the things, and until the next one, I'll see you all soon.